Hello everyone. Uh, today we'll talk about uh, scalability and I'll explain um, how you could implement scalable machine learning applications. And we are going to use for that um, uh, Celery Distributed Queue, uh, RabbitMQ Postman and Fast API. Uh, everything will be done in Python. So first, first of all, we'll walk through the source code. I'll explain you the structure of uh, sample application. And after that, we'll, uh, we'll run a demo and you'll see uh, how it works. So the idea uh, here that I'll be using um, uh, source code, uh, which um, does uh, uh, sample data set processing for Boston housing. And based on that data set, it trains multi-output model. And I'll point, uh, I'll, I'll put URL for uh, explanation for that model uh, below the video. And the training runs in 1000 epochs, and this creates a delay for around five, seven seconds. And I'll show you that uh, with salary distributed queue, we could start uh, multiple training processes uh, simultaneously. So if your uh, processor allows uh, parallel, if there are no, enough cores and you could run parallel um, runs, then training could, could be done in a parallel instead of uh, not in a sequential way. And this example is uh, running model training. So in practice, maybe you would not run uh, multiple trainings in, in a parallel, but uh, in any case, this would uh, give you good uh, idea how you could uh, scale machine learning applications. And uh, maybe you would, if your predict uh, task runs, um, uh, needs some significant, significant processing power and it takes time, you could run, for example, predict task in, in, in this scalable way uh, by running multiple uh, instances and uh, serve uh, multiple users at the same time. Okay, so let's, uh, 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 enough talking, let's, let's go and, and see how it works. So first of all, sample application is called distributed uh, seller distributed task queue with fast API for machine learning. I'll put a URL to my GitHub uh, that would point to this application uh, below the video, and you could download this code and, and run it on your side. Just to make, uh, make sure that you uh, have installed um, RabbitMQ uh, broker, uh, because Celery um, by default is using RabbitMQ. Uh, there are other brokers uh, also. Uh, that could be used by Celery, but the favorite one for me is RabbitMQ, and this is default in Celery. Also, I'll put uh, below the video a link to the resource where I explain how you could run RabbitMQ and how you could install it with Docker uh, in a very simple way on your environment. Okay, so here's the application description, some uh, additional uh, links to, to additional resources, uh, commands how you could run application, and uh, in case of Celery, you would start um, separately fast API uh, server, and then you need to start a Celery worker, uh, which would uh, act, uh, which would handle the task queue. And yeah, uh, let, let's see, let's see the source code, and let's go to the application, right? And um, over here, uh, so the, the entry point is uh, endpoint um, uh, script. This is the entry point to the application. This is a fast API um, implementation. So here we define uh, uh, our uh, our API uh, resource, right? And uh, you could uh, implement entire logic with fast API in a single uh, script, but I prefer to have um, endpoint script and then uh, refer to router uh, script where uh, I define uh, methods that implement API. So this is co this is coming from from router, so this is, um, let's keep it open. This is the router, and over here we have two methods, uh, post and get. So with po the, idea, the idea is simple. With post method, we start uh, our long task. It runs in the background asynchronously, and uh, when, when this task is started, we get back the task ID. And then we have another method, get, uh, where we could use um, uh, task ID and we could check the status of uh, uh, of the execution uh, if it's still in processing or uh, if it's done. If it's done, then we would get back the result, whatever uh, result is being returned by our method. Okay, so we got uh, endpoint router and we have uh, another script where we define um, data structure uh, for our API 
for input and output. Uh, so th this is the this is the structure is being used in in the router. For example, we, we define response model, or uh, where we define input um, uh, parameter type for the API method. Okay, this is about fast, fast API, and then uh, we have. Um, uh, data helper and training service um, scripts where we do data processing and model training. So this is uh, very uh, machine learning specific. It's using TensorFlow. Uh, there, there's, no, there's no any custom code over here. This is just generic code that you would use for to build uh, any machine learning model with TensorFlow. It's a run training method which um, uh, constructs the model, compiles it, uh, and fits uh, the model with the data set. Then at the end, we do evaluation, print out the statistics, and also we uh, do a call to the predict function to make sure that the model was trained successfully and it could run predict function. Okay, this is uh, about training service, service and um, the main thing uh, which relates to salary is implemented under uh, worker script, and over here we have salary configuration. There are uh, multiple options to configure uh, uh, salary um, Client and uh, you could find more about it um, if you check the documentation that I uh, where, uh, to which I refer in sample application description. Uh, but the most simple setup is uh, that you need to provide the name for uh, this um, instance of salary. Then you would provide uh, broker, and broker is um, uh, whatever you whatever solution you're using to uh, transfer messages, uh, and in in in, my, in our case, uh, I'm using uh, RabbitMQ, and RabbitMQ runs as a separate instance in Docker container, and I just point it uh, on a local host and uh, with this protocol, and it automatically would connect to uh, to the to the RabbitMQ. Uh, if you don't uh, if you don't need to return any response from the method when it executes, uh, then you don't you don't need to specify backend. In my case, I want to return back the response. When method completes, I want to send data back. And there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, the one which I prefer is RPC. Uh, this means um, the response will be sent through RabbitMQ RPC protocol back, and uh, we could consume it. There are other ways you could um, uh, use uh, Redis uh, database. And then response would be written to this uh, database instance, and then you could resp uh, retrieve response multiple times. With RPC, you get response once, and and it's being, uh, just uh, when the method is being uh, when the method returns, you get response, and then it disappears, and you can just should consume it. With uh, if you use Redis, then you can store response in this dat database and access uh, access um, it multiple times uh, as you want. So it depends on your use case. In my case, I prefer to use transient responses and use RPC backend. And then include the task. Uh, this is a pointer to the package, Boston Housing and Tasks. This is the name of the script. So this is where a salary task is implemented, which will be uh, executed uh, in the queue. Uh, and it would not block the main API. So this is. Uh, the core logic uh, of this application, and uh, we have um, a Python method annotated with um, salary task, and we give a name uh, to this task, uh, Boston Housing Train Model. It can be any name, uh, up to you. <coughs> and uh, we pass parameter, which we get through, through API data split, uh, data set split, and then we call run training method from uh, training service script. So this is where all the um, uh, training logic happening, right? And then at the end, we print out to salary log some status and return back um, info, okay. And it could be, if you would run predict task, it could be a uh, prediction value and you could return it back to the consumer. Okay, so this is uh, how it works. And the main point here is that this uh, task is being executed in a queue. So uh, it means it's not executed at the same time when API is called. It is executed whatever, whenever resources uh, that are allocated to salary instance would be available. And um, in API, you could ping, uh, you could check uh, the status of the task. When the task is completed, then you could receive the result. So let's see how this works. And uh, first of all, we need, based on instructions, we need to run a fast API instance. So we started with um, Uicorn. 
The instance is started and then we start Celery. So we start uh, both um, Fast API and Celery from the root package of the application. And when we start Celery, we refer to, to the worker script and uh, we also pass logging level here, for example. It starts uh, and you should print uh, how many uh, uh, information about the concurrency. For example, we have here concurrency 16, and this means my uh, processor supports uh, 16 uh, parallel operations based on, on the processor cores that are available. Right, it depends on your hardware. This means that um, in the most optimal way, I could run uh, 16 tasks in parallel, for example, on this machine. Um, Okay, and uh, when if the all the cores will be occupied, and if when the new task will arrive, uh, it would be in the queue, and it will be executed afterwards when uh, some uh, instance for the processing will become available. Okay, so we got uh, fast API and Celery, and now let's uh, switch to uh, let's open API, right? So let's um, go over here and. Uh, now let's open maybe new window, and because I would like to open uh, two two windows, because from the from the first one I'll call post method, and from the second one I would like to get uh, call get. Okay, so this is uh, okay like that. Let's make it a bit smaller, and let's open one more window over here. Let's make it a bit wider, like that, and let's navigate to application. Fine, let's uh, switch back to console and close that, and this one, let's make this like that. Okay, so now it's perfect. So from the first window, we will execute um, uh, run training. We'll uh, execute post. Let's do that. Let's uh, say that we uh, would like to use twenty percent for, uh, for 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 the uh, validation data and eighty percent for training. Or actually, yeah, twenty percent for testing and eighty uh, percent for uh, for training. Okay, so we uh, set that and let's uh, call execute. And when we call execute, then a uh, uh, new task will be placed in the seller queue and we should get uh, task ID. And by the way, let's before starting, let's open get method over here because we'll, uh, while the task would run, it would run around should be from five to 10 seconds because it takes around 1000 epochs to, to execute uh, training. So let's they execute and task is uh, registered and it's being pro uh, it runs in processing state. Okay, let's uh, copy uh, task ID over here into this window. Let's say we try it out and we execute and it's processing. Okay. Okay, so let's give it. Uh, some time because I, I put 1000 epochs so to make sure that uh, the task is not um, running too, too quick and just to give it some time to execute. Once it will finish, it will print out um, information here in the salary log also that um, task was completed. Now it says that task was, if you check the log, we see that uh, it says that task was received. Boston housing train model, and this is the ID. And this ID is matching uh, ID uh, which was returned by the post method, and the same ID we're using in the get method to check the status. Okay, and then we see that data was prepared, and it runs a training in 1000 epochs now. <clears throat> okay. Probably I should put a uh, lock. Uh, okay, actually, yeah, training is already done. Okay, by, by the time I want to say that I should put a lock to um, uh, see the status when 
about the training process, uh, it's actually completed. And now, before uh, in the previous get request, uh, we got uh, processing uh, uh, status, and if we execute now, we see that this task is completed. Fine, so this is a single task. And now let's do one more test uh, where we would start uh, two tasks. So I will start the first one and then maybe I'll give um, uh, some like five seconds delay or three seconds and I'll start the second one. And then uh, this task should run in parallel. And uh, as soon as the first one completes, uh, in very short time, the second one should complete as well because they run in parallel. So in this way, I'll show you that um, tasks are executed uh, at the same time. And in terms of scalability, this is great because uh, execution is not sequential. And uh, if uh, you can you can uh, you, you you can use uh, you can run multiple uh, requests in parallel with salary. Okay, so now let's start task one and like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's uh, let's by the way copy this ID and of that task over here. Execute its processing, and now let's start um, the second task. Uh, and now we got two tasks running in parallel. So the first one we get some uh, head up time. Uh, it probably already uh, maybe thirty percent done, and we started the second one. So now they both run in parallel and. Let's copy the ID of the second task. And I'll not paste it yet into this window because I want to see the status for the first one. It says processing, uh, obviously, yeah. And let's, let, let's, let's give it uh, a moment. It should uh, complete. And we see in the log that uh, there was task one was registered, task two. And for the both tasks, uh, we see printed out that message saying data prepared. This means um, the data was prepared for both and they run uh, in, 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 in a parallel way right now. Okay, we see that the first one is done. If I execute, status okay, right? And now I'll copy paste ID for the second task. Uh, it says it's processing. Uh, because it was started a bit later, but it should not. Uh, it should complete way faster. Okay, it's completed now, and status okay. This means uh, there was no need to wait uh, for the second task to complete as uh, so long as the, for the first one, simply because uh, the second one was was running together with the first one, and, and uh, it, it, it was able to complete uh, way faster. Okay, guys, so hopefully this uh, gives you a uh, good uh, insight uh, into scalability for machine learning applications, how you could use fast API, Celery, RabbitMQ to scale and run faster your machine learning operations. Um, uh, stay tuned. Uh, in the next video, uh, later I will explain uh, how you could use um, a tool called Flower, uh, which uh, you could use to uh, as a UI dashboard and you, where you could uh, check information about uh, task status and about running completed tasks uh, for salary. So stay tuned and goodbye. Thanks.